Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can implement a context menu on a list item in Jetpack Compose. So that means you have a list of items in your UI and you want to long click on an item to get more options. For example, to delete it, to update it or do something else, whatever you want with it. And we will implement it in a way that it will, it will also display wherever the user actually long clicks. So if I do it here, then the context menu will display there. If I, um, yeah long click here then it will display there and also not overlap the screen so let's jump into inner studio in an empty jetpack compose project and get started the first thing we want to implement is our list item composable so in our root package a new file called person item for example select file make it a composable person item and in here we will add a bunch of parameters on the one hand we want to display the name of our person um, of course, you could also pass some kind of data class here. If you need more information, we're fine with simply displaying the name for our very simple use case here. And then we want to have a list of drop down items, which um, I actually created a data class for drop down item. So um, this list will basically be the list of items we want to display in our drop down. So if we long click, uh, then we can um, display an individual list of drop down items for each menu item. And to create this class, let's just do this here in this file, data class drop down item. And all we will need for that is a text. Um, so we could also theoretically make it a list of strings here, but usually you will probably also have some kind of identifier maybe for each item to yeah, detect what you clicked on. So let's just make it a data class wrapper here so we can easily extend this. And apart from that, we need a modifier so we can change the appearance of our list item, make it the, the default modifier by default. And we also want to have an on item click lambda. So when we click on a drop down item, we want a callback for that, which we pass here. Cool. So inside of this composable, what will we start with? I would say we start with implementing the states we need to implement our uh, drop down menu or pop up menu. So we will have a variable is context menu visible by remember savable. Remember savable because that will survive screen rotations. And normally in a project, you could also um, put that state in a view model, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll keep it in the composable itself here. And this is also state that wouldn't really change since for all of your list items, the logic, how you display the dropdown is pretty much always the same. You long click, you show the dropdown, you tap outside, you hide the dropdown. So there is not really custom logic for that involved, which is why I think it's fine to also simply put that state in the composable itself to easily reuse that logic with the composable. But it's also totally fine to put that in a view model. In here, we will have a mutable state of and initially it's simply false since we don't want to show the dropdown by default. Um, for some reason, Android Studio doesn't suggest the um, import here for this, uh, but if we scroll up, uh, then we can also duplicate the Compose Runtime import and simply import everything here. Then this will be included. I'm not sure what the exact import is. I'm sure there is one, but uh, for some reason, we don't get the import option here when pressing Alt Enter. And then something else we need is a press offset because we want to offset our drop down depending on where we long clicked so we need to save that offset in the state as well by remember this um, is a dp offset which is why we can't use remember, remember savable since dp isn't savable in a bundle if you really want that then you could simply save the the float value of that um, offset and then convert it to dp but for the sake of simplicity let's keep it just um, with remember here so we'll have a dp offset dot zero initially and what we need is another state for the item height since that will be needed to also calculate the offset so where we want to show the drop down um, that will be a mutable state of zero dp initially and we will update that as soon as we know the height of our item so then as a wrapper or as a root composable for this let's just choose a card and in this card we can uh, choose an elevation like something like 40p and a modifier where we use our past modifier and we say on size changed. And in here, we will actually assign the size to our item height state. So as soon as we know how high our composable is, we want to say, okay, item height is equal to it dot height, which is an integer dot 2dp. 
we don't have that 2dp function here um, because we need access to our density for that which you can get with local density dot current and then we can cut this here say with density and then in this block we paste this and we won't have any errors then inside of this card right here we want to have a row or simply a box since we only have one single text in here where we want to yeah put in that text and where we also want to set up the um, long click logic for so for the modifier we want to have a modifier dot filmx with by default we want to have an um, pointer input which is used to actually detect long clicks because usually in Compose we use the clickable modifier which is used to detect clicks but if we want to detect any other type of touch gestures then we need the pointer input modifier here which allows us to detect swipes, um, long clicks, double taps, things like that and here it expects us to pass a key. Um, I will pass through here, I'll explain that in a moment, because uh, this is a lambda block here in Compose, a pointer in input scope, where we can now detect um, tap gestures, for example, to listen to that. But sometimes this block of code depends on a specific type of state. For example, if you say sometimes you do want to detect these tab gestures and sometimes you don't want to detect these, then whether you want to do that is d dependent on a state and if you have a setup like that, you would need to pass the state for the key here, which would basically tell our pointer input modifier, hey, whenever that key actually changes, this code should be re-executed. Since this code is not dependent on any type of state here, we can simply pass a constant value like true here. And then for this detect tab gestures function, we actually want to use the on long press function, which will give us an offset of where we actually clicked. If we made a long press, we want to show our dropdown. So is context menu visible is true. And we want to assign that value to our press offset. So that is equal to a DP offset. And the X value is our offset we clicked on dot X dot two DP and Y dot two DP like this. And we can assign some padding to our box, something like 16 DP. And inside this box, we simply put in our text that displays our person name. That's it for the logic for our box for now. Now let's actually make sure we can also display our drop down when we long click on that. So we want to have a drop down menu here. And for expanded, we need to pass whether that is expanded or not, which is dependent on our is context menu visible state. On dismiss request is a lambda that will be called when um, we are about to dismiss that. So when we tap outside or when we press the back button when it's open, then this will be called. So in here we can simply yeah, set our state to false again. And in this column scope, we can now loop over our uh, context items and display them in here. So drop down items for each, get a reference to each item. And for each of these, we want to show a drop down menu item like this, when we click on that, we want to make sure we call our on item click with the corresponding item we clicked on. And other than that, do we need something? Ah, oh, yes, we of course also want to hide our drop down. So we set the state back to false. And in here, we simply show a text with whatever the text of our drop down item is. Right now, we didn't take any care of the offset yet, but I want to show you something first. That if we go into main activity and we show our lazy column of options, so just a lazy column, make sure it fills the whole screen, fill max size actually. We can say we give each item a bit of space below. So vertical arrangement is arrangement spaced by 16 dp, import dp, pressing alt enter. Then in here, we can have an items block for all of our items. We can create a temporary list here. Uh, where we just hard code our different person names for example philip and then we do have martin we have something like carl maybe something like john jake and i don't know melanie let's take a woman as well and in here we then get a reference to each string so to the name which we can then display in our person item so person item where the person name is just a name, drop down items and on click. This would be a list of, yeah, also just a hard coded list of item one, item two, 
and item three, for example, actually we need to wrap these into a drop down item class, something like this. Um, let's fix that very quickly. Okay, so we have three drop down items for each item, but as as I said, um, you can also pass individual lists, so you can uh, show a different drop down menu for um, Philip, for example, compared to Carl, if you need that behavior. And if we click on an item, on a drop down item, let's just show toast, make text, pass our application context, pass the text of the item we clicked on, and make it length long, call that show, and we are good. If we launch this, on my emulator, then I want to now show you something, how that works without offset, because right now we didn't set up any offset um, depending on where we clicked. So now my app is launching, um, could need a bit of padding, but it doesn't matter. If we now long click on an item, we will see our drop down directly below this item. And that is what I want to show you, that very often you are already fine with this type of behavior. Because if you implement a drop down composable like this, and you put it in a box or any other type of layout container like a cart here, then the other composable inside of that container will kind of serve as an anchor. So by default, this drop down menu will show wherever your, um, in this case, the box composable is. And especially if you make that a normal screen menu, for example, so if you have like a um, K-Bub menu up here with these uh, three little dots and you want to click on that and show such a drop down, then you don't need any of this offset logic because by default, it will show at the right place below that icon button you would have. But here for list items, it would be quite weird if you long click here and it displays com somewhere completely else on the screen. So let's implement that press offset logic now. So we already saved the press offset here in our state, so we know what it, sh what it is, but we still need to assign it to our drop-down menu. So in here, I wanna say offset is equal to our press offset, and I want to say copy. I want to change the y value to, um, to press offset.y minus our item height. And the reason we do this is because um, our offset for this um, drop down is actually measured from here to the top. So if we would have an offset of, let's say, um, 20 dp, then we would move up this drop down by 20 dp to the top. However, the press offset is measured from the top left of our composable. So if we would have a press offset of 20 dp, it would be measured from the top line of our composable 20 dp downwards. That is why we actually need to assign kind of a negative offset to this um, to this drop down. And for that, we need to use the item height to actually calculate the offset as a negative offset. Hope that makes sense. Um, that is why we use the item height here. And if we now relaunch this, take a look here, and then you will notice that this hopefully works. If we tap here, then yes, the drop down is showing exactly at that position. If we do it here, yes, that is working perfectly fine. And it also already considers um, the bounds of our screen, so it won't actually exceed that. However, one more thing I want to show you, what, what you saw in my example, is that you don't really have a ripple effect right now. Um, with a clickable model file, you get a ripple effect, so this little expanding bubble that tells the user, hey, you actually just tapped on this uh, on this item. But since we use a custom pointer input here, there is no real ripple effect by default. However, we can make that work with a little bit of, a, of an effort. It's not as easy as with a clickable modifier, um, but we can make it work. So for that, we want to create something called an interaction source. Inside of remember, um, mutable interaction source. And that is basically something that tells our composable, hey, um, there is, an, is a user interaction at this position happening on our composable. And that again can then be used to show a ripple effect at exactly that position. So in our box, after fill max width, we now want to say we have an indication, which is kind of a ripple effect, where we need to pass our interaction source. And for the indication, we say a local indication that current. And that, however, is not enough. We also need to tell our interaction source when a press uh, starts to happen and when it is released um, so that it can probably uh, draw this indication. And we do this in our pointer input modifier. So in detect tab gestures, we want to, um, we want to use another lambda, which is called on press. And here we want to create a press indication. 
which is, uh, which we can probably do like this. Yes, it is press interaction press, and we need to pass the press offset, which is simply it here. And then this interaction source actually just works like a flow. So we can say our interaction source and we want to emit a value into this, an interaction actually. And this press interaction is an interaction. So we now say, hey, the press started, it contains the offset, so it knows where to draw the ripple. Then after that, we can say we want to try a weight release so we just wait in this function, we block this function, it's a suspending one, until the user releases their tab. And then we want to say interaction source that re uh, emit a release interaction. So we now tell it, hey, now the user actually released their finger. And here we need to pass the press interaction for which the finger was now released because theoretically the user could tap with multiple fingers on that composable. So we need to explicitly mention which press was released here. And for that, we can simply pass the press we created before. So quite a bit of work to um, show this ripple for custom pointer input modifiers, but we can make it work that way. So if we now relaunch this, take a look here, then now you see the ripple effect completely normal as you know it from normal clickable modifiers. Let's fix the padding a little bit. And also I want to show you a little bit of an issue with this approach. Um, so first of all, here in the lazy column, let's have um, content padding, padding values of 16 dp. And then let's say we have some more entries here and we launch this. Take a look here in our emulator. Then right now the padding is fine. Drop down is still working also right here but if we do this somewhere at the bottom then it of course needs to show above where we tap because there's not enough space below so if we do it here you see that the offset here is kind of wrong it's, it doesn't show exactly where i uh, where my tap was and the reason is that this composable this drop down composable um, kind of has an inverted offset when it shows above the finger so in that case if it would show above our tap then we would need to invert this y offset to make it positive if it was negative before. And I personally have not found an easy way to detect if this actually shows above the touch or below the touch. I'm sure you can find a way by actually measuring the height of the drop down composable and then seeing if it would fit here on the screen. And if it does not fit, you know it's showing above, but that's quite a bit of effort. Um, so if you really depend on this behavior and if you really don't, if you really care a lot about um, having the exact offset here and you don't and you would care about this little um, piece of wrong offset then that is a way how you could solve that but for most scenarios here it will actually display below the tab so that will be totally fine and for that you will have no issues with the offset and of course if we click an item then we get the corresponding toast with the item we clicked on so i hope you enjoyed this quick compose context menu tutorial if so then you will definitely also love my more advanced android premium courses which you can find using the first link in this video's description so you can also become an industry ready android developer thanks for watching i will see you back in the next video have an amazing day bye bye